There's something very powerful about having a central character who is a vulnerable young woman. Intelligent, vulnerable, little geeky, who you connect with. And I think that the whole idea of connecting with a character is missed in a lot of the subsequent horror movies that just basically tried to replicate the action and actually exaggerate the action without replicating what was key, which is this connection to this girl. They're taking advantage of this reality TV fascination that we as a culture have. Um, and obviously have put a sinister coating over that, and it's very effective. I knew there was gonna be a meeting with these two people, and I knew that she was gonna say something to him. And so what I asked them to do was make sure that what she said was, I am not afraid of you. So you have failed. So ultimately your boogeyman thing has failed. I'm happy to be able to work with this crew and these actors. It's fun. Um, I certainly have moved on from these movies, but I am trying to give my all in this last sequence to just make sure that I say what I feel like Lori really wants to say and that I send her off with a, a kind of a little bit of poetry. Lori obviously has changed over the years. It's not like she's this little repressed virgin anymore. I mean, she's a weathered, tired, beaten down human being because of all of the tr things she has suffered through. And the guilt and the shame, you know, I mean, obviously she's caused other people to die. I mean, there's yeah, a whole series of traumas that have occurred for this person. So I'm not, um, I think the little girl we once knew and liked a lot uh, is no longer, you know, really who's here anymore. I think Jamie Lee, um, you know, is in a way the original Scream Queen, so um, you're, you almost feel like you want to do good by her and, and make, you know, her proud because it's kind of her baby in a way. Um, but, uh, but it's awesome. I mean, you're not doing something that, that um, is a brand new idea which sometimes can be great, but sometimes can be scary. I mean, you really are part of something that is, is an old establishment and a, and a very respected one and has a great fan base, so it's, it's great. It's one of those things that it doesn't matter how many times you've seen the Halloween films or um, how many times you've seen the mask sitting on <laughs> the mannequin, it, it catches you and your stomach just like drops. And it's really, I mean, there's not a lot of acting involved when you're, you know, running away from him or doing whatever you do with him. It, it's frightening and terrifying. And, um, and I think there's something that's, um, you know, that separates it from all the other horror films in that there is this persona behind the mask that we don't really know anything about except what we saw when he was a little kid. She's scared of her own shadow, basically. Um, you know, she, uh, not really sure on the guy into things, not really sure where she fits into this whole group because they are a wild and crazy bunch and um, and not really quite sure how she got roped into this whole experiment. It reminds me kind of, of like going to my first party in high school and you just kind of stand at the the edge of it and look in and you're not quite sure where you fit in and you want to but um, but you don't really know how and and I think that the people that she's surrounded by probably all have attributes that she wishes she had you know the ability to be more outgoing or the ability to um, to dress as funky as you know say Donna does and then that kind of thing but she just doesn't know how She is one of a kind. I mean, you don't, I don't think that you 
meet that many people, especially in this business, who just have it completely together. And she is, you know, she's a professional. She's someone definitely that you look at and go, if, if that's where I'm headed for, it's not a bad place to be. She's awesome. So only the highest of regards for her. It was just the way that she carried herself around the set and, and making sure that things were proper. And, you know, it, it's something that you're, you would do anyway as an actor, but one got the sense that it wasn't so much for herself or for us as a cast, but for the people that were out there that, you know, have been there since the beginning. I asked my son, he was 17, why do you pay money to get scared? He said, Daddy, I take a girl to the movies. After five minutes, either she's hugging me or I'm grabbing her. Who is Michael Myers? I'm, Michael Myers is a mask. I mean, you know, anybody could be under the mask and all this. But Always my struggle is that really the Michael Myers is a shape. The least we see him, the more effective it is. Leave it to the imagination of the audience. It's pretty strange to go back to a genre I haven't visited for 20 years because I did Halloween too, and then I never did another horror film. And, um, Horror was not a genre that I gravitated toward for any other reason that, than um, the freedom to photograph and, and film conceive visually. It seems to me that horror films give you great visual latitude because as long as you hit the requirement of horror films, which is to scare people, nobody's particularly concerned in what manner the film is photographed. And that's kind of fun and it's very liberating. Kids are picking up digital cameras, both still cameras and, and video cameras, and really creating their own, their own worlds. So when I read the script, it seemed to me it had this uh, sort of millennium sensibility to it, which was to mix uh, digital video and film and, and uh, create sort of an inter interchangeable new medium. Now that I'm getting the opportunity to be a part of something that I've been a fan of for such a long time, it's a whole nother level of appreciation for it because I get to see the things that I've been a fan of for so long. It's, it's astonishing me to, to see how they put together the, the whole, the Michael Myers being and the, the, the energy that has to go with him and everything from the movement to his strength to his you know, just the vibe about him. You get to understand it from a, a, a better and a different perspective that I can appreciate in a, in a whole new way. I'm a horror flick fan overall, but I'm a, I'm a fan of this movie in particularly just because, you know, out of the Freddy Kruegers and the, the, the Michael Myers and the, you know, the different, the Draculas and all of them, I mean, Michael Myers was just the one that never had nothing to say. He just bust your ass or destroy a couple of things or kill a whole bunch of people and the same expression to be on his face every single time because he always wore that mask. So there was just always this mystery and this never ending suspense thing about who and what and how and why is Michael Myers, you know what I'm saying? Freddy is this guy that is pretty much like an, an, an aspiring young entrepreneur and he's doing his thing and he got his little business mind focus on and he's getting this uh, company together that's he calls Dangertainment and it's this thing on the internet where he thought about a concept which was to broadcast a live action as it was happening television or internet series through this uh, 
contest that he put together where six students were chosen to go into the home of the most brutal mass murderer in all history, which is Mike Myers. She's definitely exciting to be around in many ways. For one, she's fun, so that definitely breaks the ice. It ain't feeling as, you know, tight collared and super uniform. It's a nice free spirit and we're vibing majorly in a good way, so it helps. I think being in, in this horror movie is gonna help me to deal with other horror movies because I'll be able to see the process, how people die, you know, the body doubles, the special effects. So maybe breaking it down like this will help me deal with going to the Cineplex and experiencing it, not being too scared. Nora Winston is uh, Freddie Harris's, um, she liked to say, producer. Um, although he tends to credit her as his assistant, how men tend to do. When you're a woman, they want to keep you in your place. Um, and she is not desperate, but she's, she's very, uh, she wants to move up the ladder. She's very um, upset with how Freddie, you know, treats her and tries to keep her in the background. And he gets all the camera attention and she's trying to change that. Yeah, Rick has been really amazing. You bring, you know, ideas to the table and he really listens to you rather than just cutting you down and saying, I'm the director, no. I mean, he really listens and I came up with this idea that Nora's addicted to candy and he's like, oh, that's great. And I came up with interesting ways to use the candy with Busta's character, Freddie, and you know, he, he's all for it. And he's all into us ad-libbing and you know, he's, he's, he lets the actors have their freedom, which is beautiful. Yeah, it was really nice because he was like, yo, Ma, you know, when I heard you was doing this, you know, I was like, ooh, you know, it's cool because, like, we had that past thing going, you know, so I have, like, this comfort level with you. So, uh, likewise, Buster. <laughs> What's really cool about Halloween 8 to me is that it is current. It's, it's, it's what's on the pulse, you know, of the world right now, the internet. And I love that, the fact that it is so current, that it is speaking to, to, to people now, um, and how the kids have the cameras, and it's not just like someone filming them, but they're actually, you know, to, uh, it's from their point of view. The weird and scary thing about Mike Myers to me is I see him walking around, you know, on set, and he has this mask, and it, it doesn't have any emotion. So that's spooky to me, to be able to kill and, and just to have this kind of stoic face. It's like, ah. Because it's hard, because it has a certain, because Halloween has a certain campy element to it, you know, one can allow themselves the freedom to just feel okay about playing and not worry about, you know, my acting, my acting, just to play and to essentially to get to the essence of acting, which is, you know, having a good time. <laughs> to me that, you know, that's what it offers. I think that ultimately he's probably a victim of fashion and, you know, the whole uh, anti-hero concept has come full circle. Now, you know, he's uh, symbolic of, you know, the, the rebel, but the commercialized rebel, maybe. It's scary to see him on set, you know? It's like, there he is walking around all the time. I don't even know who's playing him. I've never even met the guy. He just walks around. I don't even know if he has a face under it. And he, he walks around, he's got that mask on, and, you know, he kind of... It isn't. I don't know, it's spooky. What makes him so scary? Uh, the mask. The mask. I play Rudy Grimes. Uh, he's basically a very, very ambitious uh, young chef um, who sees uh, going into this house and doing this Michael Myers thing as like a good uh, promotion for his ambitions to become uh, a worldwide, uh, internationally known chef and open his own business and all that stuff.
on one hand, it's serious stuff. I mean, people are dying, but on the other hand, it's a horror movie. It's Halloween, so um, we we laugh about all, every scene. Like we have like our own alternative version of every scene that's funny, and we crack ourselves up. I mean, all we do is laugh. Like when we're not running and screaming, we're laughing. So it's fun. There's something about the Halloween movies that gets you to care about um, the characters that are being chased and killed. You know, like, I think that the Halloween movies, from what I've seen, I haven't seen a lot of them, but from, but from what I've seen, they get you to a point where you care about the people. And so when they're in danger, you actually care that they're in danger. And I think that that makes a difference. I think, uh, I mean, I'm not a horror expert, but I suspect that in, in an average horror movie, you don't get to really know the characters that well, so you don't really care that much when they die. You know, And I think in this movie, and in the other ones, you really get to know them, and you like them, and uh, that's what gives you that, that tension when they're in trouble. I think that people like to be affected emotionally in whatever way it is, whether it's to be scared or moved with romance or, you know, moved with sadness or or great joy, you know, any, anything that taps into your emotions, people, uh, I think, latch onto it. And being scared is something that's very immediate, very sharp, and I think that just goes along with that general need we have to be affected emotionally when we go to a play or see a movie. Jen is, is crazy. She's the she's the comic relief in a sense just because she really she cares about people but um, she really cares about herself and, and what she looks like and when she does care about other people it's more about how they look so you know they're not embarrassed for themselves and um she's she's really smart but it just doesn't I hope she's really smart <laughs> but it doesn't really come across because she's very um She's very hyperactive, and she's always everywhere, and definitely a fun character. I've never had an opportunity to play a character like this. That's kind of the, uh, the, the blonde one that you, you kind of hope she dies. We found out about it on, on a Friday, and then I left on Sunday, and I was just so, I was like jumping up and down in my bed, and all my friends, I have a friend that's living with me now, and, and another friend was over, and we were, I was like jumping on the bed, and they were like, what movie did you get? And I was like, Halloween! Yeah! <laughs> like, I was just so excited. Rick's really cool. Yeah, he, he definitely gives you the, the opportunity to, to uh, take a step and be a little bit more creative and uh, do the research on your character and, and bring that into, into the film because, like, you know, you've read the script and you you become this person in a sense and and then Rick comes in and he's kind of like you know the father figure that's like well do you what do you know and it's it's fun and he's he's just as crazy as we are which is really cool he's like a big kid Donna Chang is um, an ever-changing chameleon-like effervescent academic, um, really highly analytical and intelligent and sort of a dry wit, Euro trash, goth, um, <laughs> the brain of the bunch. I think she's come along to um, throw in a different perspective to, to help. She's going to be one of the people who's not completely buying into the whole, oh, Mike Myers. She's there to sort of stand back, even try to um, maybe expose it a little or debunk it or, or bring in a different perspective. I've always wanted to, to do a horror film. And why not be a part of the one that pretty much started this, this, uh, this kind of genre that it's in? He's a, uh, a law student, and basically, <laughs> Bill, I don't want to like, because uh, I've talked with Rick, the director, uh, a bunch of times, and, and we really, he didn't really want to like peg him into one sort of thing, 
but he's definitely like a, a little bit of a jerk, a little bit of a, a womanizer, a little bit of, you know, the guy who doesn't care, and, and a little bit of just a little off kilter from the rest of the group.